If you want to improve your aim and movement in Call of Duty and ultimately win more gunfights and get better at the game, then you came to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down what settings the majority of the best players in the game are using, why they use them, but then also explain what settings are actually best for you depending on your skill level and preferences. There are a few settings that I actually changed from previous Call of Duty titles that I'm excited to share with you guys because personally, they've made a huge difference for myself. I'll also be going over several different tips, including some basic movement techniques techniques like how to slide cancel effectively and much more. And then finally, at the end, I'm going to talk about my favorite method for very quickly improving both your aim and your movement. And it's something that I do on a nearly daily basis that has completely changed my game since I started doing it. If you're new here, my name is T Captain X. I make educational Call of Duty content with the goal of helping you get better at the game and knowing what the best loadout settings and much more are. If you like that kind of stuff, consider subscribing for more stuff just like this. All right, so let's jump right into settings here. Going over to the settings tab and then controller. I'm going to try to go through uh, in order to make this as simple as possible for you guys here. First, we're going to start with our button layout. Now, the whole purpose of a button layout, in my opinion, the number one thing, our number one goal is so that we never have to take our thumb off of the right analog stick while we're doing different movement techniques and thing like that. So if you are on a completely normal stop controller, what I mean by that is you don't have any extra buttons or paddles on the back of your controller. I think tactical is probably going to be best overall setting for this. The reason I say that is what tactical does is when you press R3. So when I press in on my right analog stick is how I'm going to uh, crouch and slide. And they have a new setting now where we can cancel our slide by sprinting. So what we can do is we can slide with R3 and then cancel with L3 by pressing on pressing on that left analog stick. And essentially it makes slide canceling very easy to do. You don't need to hold the controller a fancy way. You don't need paddles and all those extra stuff. Now, the only problem with tactical is you would still have to take your thumb off the analog stick if you wanted to jump. So one thing you can do to solve that is play bumper jumper tactical because this makes L1 the jump button. So that way I could jump around a corner and shoot things like that. Or, you know, you could try to jump while shooting, although it's a little bit awkward for me to be completely honest, but I think you get the idea there. Now, bumper jumper tactical is kind of awkward for a lot of people to learn. Another option out there that a lot of high level players do play at is on just normal default controls, but they play with what's called claw. And that involves taking your index finger here to touch the top button. So I can jump using my index. I can slide slide cancel. Now, personally, this is just very awkward for me to hold the controller like this, and I just can't do it. My hands are not flexible enough to do that, but there's a lot of people that play that way and absolutely love it. And if you can get used to it, you don't need to get a custom controller with paddles. Now I play with a controller that has paddles on the back here. So this is an aim controller. There's four paddles or buttons on the back of this. Basically how this works is you can remap these to whatever you want. So for me, my bottom right is my slide or crouch, and then my bottom left is my jump. So slide canceling would be bam, 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 bam. It's pretty easy for me to do just because I've been playing like this for a while. I'm very used to it. My top right is my triangle, which is to switch weapons. And then my top left is square, which would be to reload. And then I do get asked how I hold the controller. I have my bottom two fingers on the bottom of the controller, and I use my middle fingers to hit all four paddles by curling up when I need to hit the top two. But they rest on the bottom two, which is my slide and jump. Now, moving on from button layout to cover the rest of these uh, settings in the controller tab, bumper ping, I recommend leaving this off. What this does is it allows you to ping enemies and locations with your bumper, your L1. The problem with this is it actually merges your tactical and lethal together into one button, and you have to select between them. So really not worth using. You can just use up on the D-pad to ping. Now, flipping L1, L2 and R1, R2. If you're on a completely normal controller that does not have digital tap or mouse click triggers, I definitely recommend turning this on. Now I can aim with L1 and shoot with R1. And the reason this is beneficial is it's faster than pulling that full trigger of an L2 R2. However, for myself, I play with this off. And the reason for that is again, on my aim controller, I have what's called digital tap triggers. So this is a, like a mouse click for me. And it's just very fast and very responsive. One of the cool things about aim controllers though, is I can flip these off by pressing these buttons. And now I have full trigger pulls 
then I can bam, I can go right back and we're right back to a mouse click. So if you wanna play other games out there, like uh, maybe like a racing game where you wanna be able to control that, you have that ability to go back and forth with the aim controller. And if you've never played with these, basically the main advantage of having the digital tap triggers is that semi-auto guns are way easier to shoot. I think it's close to be able to just use L1, R1 instead, but the digital tap triggers are very nice if you're able to get them. Moving on to stick layout preset. This, I recommend just leaving default unless you have played with one of these different settings in the past. This is completely personal preference. I don't think there's any competitive advantage to really playing with any of these. It just comes down to personal preference. For vibration, I would recommend turning this off for a competitive sense. However, I actually have the vibration motors removed from my aim controller and it just makes the controller lighter because I never really play with them. But maybe you want to play a campaign or a different game you want that immersion, then obviously you could turn it on for those. Now moving on to dead zone. And this is a very important setting that I have changed recently. So normally I would recommend for your right stick minimum. Normally I would say go as low as you can go where you do not get stick drift. So for me, normally that's about three for me, or it used to be 0.03 in previous Call of Duties. I have absolutely no stick drift when I'm on this setting. Now I recently though, I have gone down to playing at zero dead zone on both my left and right stick minimums. So you will notice I do have just a little bit of stick drift, which is where my guy is starting to move on his own in this controller that I have here. It's I want to say it's about six months old. I play a lot on it, so it's got a lot of wear and tear. But even with no dead zone, this is very minimal stick drift. But here's the thing. As long as you are controlling the analog sticks, stick drift doesn't matter as long as it's not to the point where if I wasn't touching it and my controller was like moving this fast, it was had a ton of drift. That might be an issue. Now, why have I turned my dead zone down to zero? What is the benefit of doing this? Essentially, it allows me to be very precise with uh, my aim. And it's also much more faster and snappier than before. When you have no dead zone, the moment you put any pressure on your analog stick, whichever direction you're going to aim, it is going to respond instantly. Instead, if you have a dead zone, you have to move past that dead zone before that input is then registered. So let's say maybe you're used to playing on 0.05 or five dead zone for your right minimum. I'd recommend trying to go down a little bit. You don't have to go all the way to zero. Maybe go down to three or two or one and just see how you like it. One thing you're probably going to notice is your sensitivity will feel faster. So I recommend kind of taking your time, play at least a full day or two before you kind of make your assessment. But after doing this for the last several weeks on both Warzone and in MW3, I have loved this setting and my aim feels so much better, especially in close quarters. So I don't recommend doing this if you are a newer player, if you're kind of more beginner level to maybe average level, this might not be a great idea for you because it's going to make your sense a little bit too fast for you per se. But if you're an above average player or so, I really recommend giving this a try. Again, you don't have to go all the way down to zero, but give it a try going a little bit lower than before, even if that means you have a little bit of stick drift. Now, my left stick minimum is also zero and basically the same thing applies. It's going to be more responsive when I move my left stick. So my character is going to be faster with movement. Now for the maximums, my left stick maximum, I have turned down to about 75. And what this does is basically it means I only have to move my left analog stick stick 75% of the maximum amount to trigger the full effect. And basically it just means I can move a little bit faster. I can go to full speed a little bit faster. And, and instead, if it was set all the way to 99, which is the default or hundred, I'm sorry, I guess. So on my right stick though, I play at 99 or in reality, I should just probably play at hundred, I guess. I didn't even realize that there was a hundred setting. What that's going to do is now, because on my right stick, that's my aiming stick. This gives me the full range of motion so that I have full control and just more precision when it comes to aiming. Now, when it comes to the triggers, this only is going to matter if you are playing not R1, R2 flipped, or you do not have digital tap triggers like myself. So for me, this setting literally doesn't matter because of my digital tap triggers. But if you like to play normally and use L2, R2 to aim and shoot, I'd recommend turning this down a bit. So what this means is if I had this on like 50 or so, it means I have to pull the trigger halfway before it feels that trigger 
go into effect. But if I turn this down, let's say if I turned it all the way down to zero, the moment I put any pressure on my left trigger, it's going to apply. So you wouldn't have to pull it all the way down. So probably want to play with this to find what's right for you, but I would definitely keep this on the lower side so it is more responsive. Now, this is kind of an additional setting. Number one, this is only going to work if you are on PC and if you are using a PlayStation controller, PS4, PS5, and it has to be an officially licensed Sony controller. So if you have like a third party, like I know like some scuffs and other brands, it, it won't work because they're not officially licensed. AIM controllers are officially licensed Sony controllers. So this will work for an AIM controller. So this is DS4 Windows. I want to point out here that I was very hesitant to use this because DS4 has been associated with apparently cheating and like anti-recoil, like I think kind of similar, similar to like how a Cronus works. I'm only using this for one thing. And this is courtesy of my friend Art is War. He's the same person that made the audio tunes for Warzone. So on this, we have a profile here. I have the Art DS4 profile here. The only thing we changed is we went in here and the dead zone in the anti dead zone, we have changed to zero. These will default at like 0.1 or 0.2. The theory behind this is that your controller has a built in dead zone that even if you set your in game dead zone to zero, there's still dead zone on your controller that is still you have to like override. So DS4 is essentially overriding that and truly making your dead zone zero. So really, you only want to do this if you like that zero dead zone. Like I mentioned, it's probably not worth doing if you want some dead zone. We think this might be placebo. It's hard to tell after using it for a few weeks, I like it. I think it makes the controller feel a little bit snappier, a little bit more responsive. And the weird thing was when we made the anti dead zone setting zero, I feel like my dead zone got lower, but I didn't get worse stick drift. Again, I might be completely wrong. There's probably somebody watching this video like this guy's a freaking idiot, but I think it makes the controller feel a little bit better. These are the only things I changed. Like I said, I haven't changed any other settings in here. The only thing I'll say, and I'll just show Oh, really quick here. A very important thing is if you're going to do this, go to your touchpad, make sure you change output mode to pass through. That way your touchpad will still function properly, like to open up your map and things like that. The only other thing I'll say here is here's my settings tab. I believe those are the only other settings I changed and then just make sure you have the right controller selected. So DS4 would be a PS4 and then DualSense would be a PS5. I'll put a link to download DS4 in the description if you want to try it. Again, only worth doing if you like playing at a completely zero dead zone. All right, so back in the in-game settings, we are now on the aiming tab. So first, we've got to talk about sensitivity. Now, one thing I want to point out before I get into this, I have heard a few people ask, do you feel like your sensitivity is faster in MW3 compared to MW2? And I would say maybe it's hard to tell, but personally, I have stayed at 8.8, which is what I've played on for over a year now in Call of Duty. Now, when it comes to picking your sensitivity, this is subjective. There is no best sensitivity out there, guys. I want to just throw that out there. But what I will say is the majority of the top level players often play between about six to 10 and 99% of them will leave their horizontal and vertical as the same value. Now, if you are someone that even on the default six sensitivity, you're like, you know what? That is still too fast for me. There's nothing wrong with going down to five or four. I think when you go down to three or lower, you're going to have problems in close quarter situations to be able to turn around quickly, but you absolutely could play at these lower sensitivities. But the majority of the top players, for example, Biffle, who has arguably been considered the best player in Call of Duty and more Warzone specifically, plays at a default six sensitivity. I play at eight, just a little bit higher than normal. Someone like Joe Woe plays at around 10. There are a few exceptions to the rule that do play at very high sensitivities, like Utex, uh, I think Capture maybe plays at 2020. But unless you are a two to three plus KD player. I do not recommend turning your sense above about 10 or so. I just do not think it is worth it. You don't need to move that fast in this game. 10, 10 and is plenty fast enough. Now, if you're like, I have no idea where to start. What should I do? Six, six is a good place to start. And what you can do is pick a random point here. So I'm going to pick this red die here. And just while hip firing, try to flick to your target. So go off to the side and try to flick and try to stop your aim. So I'm roughly close each time. Looks like I'm ending up just a tad short. And there I go over. If you're consistently ending up short each time you try to flick, you might want to turn your sensitivity higher. If you're consistently going past it, you might want to turn your sensitivity down. 
Again, this is a very rough and crude test. And the other thing I'm gonna recommend is whenever you change a setting in game, you need to give it a few days. Do not just change it and play for one game. And you're like, oh, I, I didn't do that good that game. It must be the setting. You gotta stick with it, guys. That's one of my number one tips when it comes to adjusting settings. Now, going on to the ADS sensitivity multiplier or aim down sight sensitivity multiplier. What this means is, so for example, mine is at 0.85. Simply this means when I aim my gun, my sensitivity is now 85% of what it was hip fire so this is a hundred percent this is 85 percent you'll notice it's just a little bit slower because it's only 15 percent slower and why i like that is it just makes my aim a little bit more precise uh, and i find it easier to track enemies especially at medium to long range with that slightly slower ADS sensitivity. Now, I think a good rule of thumb when it comes to this is you probably don't wanna go lower than about 0.7 or so. I think when you start getting that low, you're having this huge change in sensitivity and it's gonna really just throw things out of whack. So I recommend either keeping it at one, a lot of people keep it at one, especially if you're a lower sense player around like 6.6, six, 7.7. Six, seven. But if you like to bump your sense up a little bit, maybe turn it down a little bit. So like I'm 8.8, eight, eight, so I bump my ADS down to 0.85. Now, one other thing I wanna talk about when it comes your controller is your analog sticks here so on my aim controller i have very tall analog sticks on both my left and my right i'm using the tall analog stick option that is a custom option you can get if you have a normal controller get a control freak because what a control freak does is it pops on top of the controller of your analog stick and it's going to make it stick up a little bit taller which would be basically the same thing as what this is the reason this is good is it gives you more room to move and turn your analog stick. And I'll show you another example. So normally I play, this is a PS4 aim controller. Normally I play with a small left and a tall right. I've just been kind of messing around with the tall left, but I will say having the taller right stick makes a massive difference when it comes to your aiming. So I highly recommend getting a control freak. They're about 15 bucks, I wanna say. Or of course you could get an aim controller because then it is built into it, which ultimately I think is a little bit better now, sensitivity multiplier, I don't mess with any of this, but you can adjust it for specific things like when you're driving a vehicle, when you're using a kill streak like a cruise missile, but I have personally left those alone. Vertical aim axis. This is if you want to play inverted, which is like where you push up to go down and down to go up. If you're someone that you've played a lot of maybe like flight simulator games and you're used to that style of aiming, this is where you're going to change it. So you can do it for vehicles only or also in game, which is like on foot would be just you're actually running around and looking aiming now tactical stance sensitivity multiplier tactical stance is a new setting this year in cod what this is is for me if you hold l2 and hit down on the d-pad you're going to get in your tactical stance which is a sideways aiming you can actually build some guns to have really really good tax stance spread meaning it's very accurate and you have a great mobility it is a lot of fun to play like this to be completely honest here but it's important to know that you can adjust your sensitivity for this as well. So what I've done is I have matched it exactly with my ADS sense. Now, if you want it to feel more like hip fire, leave it at one. But if you want it to feel more like you're aiming, then match it with your ADS sensitivity multiplier. Now, aim response curve type is a very, very important setting here. And there are three settings. Default is gonna be standard. And I'm gonna put up a graph here on screen so you can see the differences. With standard, it is a ramp up in the speed of when we start to apply more pressure on the right stick it will ramp up that speed of how fast your character turns around linear there is no ramp up it is just the more you push the faster you go it is a direct one-to-one -one correlation and then dynamic is what i play on and what the majority of warzone pros are playing on i believe a little bit more cdl or multiplayer pros stick with standard but the majority of warzone pros at least are playing dynamic and the reason for that is it's a little bit snappier and responsive when you first start to move the analog stick you're going to see it curls up but then as you get kind of more in the medium to longer area of the stick it actually slows down and is more accurate and personally i find it great because it allows me to be very fast and move around very quickly however it also allows you to still be very precise when it comes to your medium to long range aiming and that's why i think it's kind of the best of both worlds now a new thing they did this year is you can actually change the slope scale so let's say you wanted to play dynamic but you don't want it to be as aggressive and 
and you want it to be closer to linear, you could turn this down, maybe go down to like 0.5 or so, and it would be like a hybrid between linear and dynamic. Again, I'm not playing with this. I've always played dynamic and I like it, but it is an option out there that is new this year. You can also provide a separate ADS sense when you focus. Focusing is when you have a sniper scope that when you aim the gun in and it says like hold L3 to hold breath or focus, that is focusing. So that would mean is only when you focus or hold your breath, your sense could change even more. I don't recommend doing this because it's going to mess with kind of muscle memory that all of a sudden when you hold your breath, your sensitivity slows down. But if you're someone, you're not a very aggressive player or more of a casual player and you like to sit in the back and snipe and you have trouble lining up those very precise shots, this might be beneficial for you to turn this down a little bit. Maybe go down to like 0.75 or so, so that your sensitivity is a little bit slower when you're trying to line up those long shots. ADS sensitivity transition timing. This is simply means that if our ADS sense from way up here, our ADS sense multiplier, if this is other than one, then this setting, the transition timing matters. Instant means the moment I press L2, the second I press L2, my sense it will change from that hip fire sense to your ADS sense. Or we could do gradual, which gradual is going to be a ramp up effect as, as you aim that gun in, it's gonna change. This matters more when you have a very slow aim down sight speed gun, like a big heavy LMG. And then after zoom, that change doesn't take effect until it's all the way zoomed in. Personally, I like to do instant because that way the moment I hit L2, now I know my ADS sense has taken effect and there's not like a ramp up if I'm using a slower gun. You can go in and do custom sensitivity per zoom, which basically just means, let's say you have a specific optic. You're like, you know what? When I use this 6X optic, it feels too fast or too slow. You could go in and change that slightly and try to get it to feel what's just right. I don't like to mess with this stuff. I leave it off because again, I want everything to just feel one-to-one -one and feel as natural as possible for muscle memory purposes. All right, now we've got to talk about the good old aim assist settings in Call of Duty. And I want to first debunk a few things here. Number one, you should play with aim assist on. If you're one of those people that it's like, oh, it just messes with my aim i promise you you are putting yourself at a disadvantage aim assist is the controller player's best friend in call of duty now when it comes to aim assist type here a lot of people are like oh black ops is stronger precision is better listen guys default and black ops has been tested i've seen several people do tests on this and there is no difference in the strength of aim assist they are exactly the same i literally do not know what the difference of these is people have gone in and tested these and there does not seem to be a difference at least in mw3 now precision and focusing are a little little bit different than default or black ops. What these ones do is basically they reduce that bubble or the size of where aim assist starts to take effect, but supposedly make it a little bit stronger. I don't really feel like it's that much stronger. I feel like it's about the same. And I think in general, you want to have that bubble of aim assist as big as possible. So I recommend just sticking with default. You want to try black ops, go for it, but I don't think there's any difference. Now I want to explain the two different types of aim assist in Call of Duty. So first you have your normal rotational slowdown. So if I start going towards this target, you're going to notice when I get to about that red line, my aim all of a sudden slows down. And I'm, even though I'm not changing how much pressure I'm putting on my right stick, if I go the other way, it all of a sudden speeds up when I get outside of that bubble, it slows down, speeds up. And basically what aim assist does is whenever you're in a bubble around an enemy, that your sensitivity is going to just slow down over the enemy and it makes it so you're less likely to overshoot them. Now, rotational aim assist is a little bit different and that's what's more kind of the broken aspect or how, what you can kind of abuse once you understand how to do this. So when I'm looking at this enemy here, I'm not touching my right stick, but as I strafe left and right, my character is still angling towards this model. And even if we aim our gun here, again, I'm not touching my right stick, but as I strafe left and right past it, my character is still turning on his own towards this. That is what rotational aim assist is. And basically it means as long as I am putting pressure on my left stick, it can be forward, backwards, left, right, whatever direction it is, there is going to have that rotational aim assist effect here. Now, if I step up and watch this go by me, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so if we were to replay that here, you would see it. I'll see if the, the editor can work some magic here and, and replay this. You will see how I never touched my right stick and my aim went from about here 
all the way over to here as that dummy rotated, even though I never touched my right analog stick. And all that was because is because as I stepped up, I was just pressing forward on my left stick. They didn't do it as much there. Sometimes it's different because I think the, there it goes. Look at that. <laughs> That is rotational aim misses, guys. So basically, rule of thumb, how do you increase this? Make sure whenever you are shooting in your gunfights that you are moving the left stick. Do not stand perfectly still. So, you, and it can even just be walking forward a little bit or strafing, strafing left and right. Now, third person ADS correction of type. This only matters for third person modes, which in MW3, there are none except for zombies. So assist will give you the highest amount of aim assist if that's what you want in third person modes only. Now, motion sensor aiming, this is like the gyro aiming where you like move your controller and stuff like that. I have never played with this. So I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm not gonna speak on it because I don't really understand how these mechanics work. All right, so now going into the final tab for controller settings the gameplay tab which is going to be basically focused a lot around movement so number one automatic sprint this is kind of a controversial setting and i have gone back and forth on this one in mw2 and in warzone 2 i usually just ran automatic sprint and that was because the sprint to fire time or the amount of time it takes to go from sprinting to pulling your gum down in mw2 the last call of duty it was really slow that time was like you were you were slow in mw3 it is way faster you can sprint and pull your gun down pretty quickly and because of that and with the extra movement techniques and whatnot i think it is more beneficial if you have a decent level of uh, movement mechanics to play on automatic tactical sprint so that it is very easy to get into our tax sprint which is the fastest amount of sprinting your character can do now if you don't like that i would say either go off or automatic sprint but change it so your tactical sprint behavior is single tap run what that does is let's say it was on off if it was on off i move my left stick i go forward i press l3 i instantly get to my tactical sprint so it would be very easy to get in and out of your tactical sprint if you do that but you don't want to mess with accidentally getting into your sprint because of that and if you like to use shotguns a lot i will say auto attack sprint is not the best for that so in a situation like that might be beneficial to turn it off and run single tap run auto move forward you're going to want to leave this off this is just not good for competitive purposes really at all now mantling i overall i think turning all of the mantle settings these three turn them off and it's going to decrease the chances of when you're accidentally mantling on something accidentally grabbing onto a ledge when you don't want to because in this game the mantle mechanics are a little bit goofy sometimes um i'm not a big fan of this ledge hanging system the other thing that i've changed with this is the ledge climb behavior i have this to movement base because what that means is as long as i'm moving forward on with my left stick my guy is going to mantle up a little bit quicker so i feel like it decreases the chance where i'm awkwardly like hanging on a ledge and it just makes it easier because when i'm pushing forward my guy is like okay i gotta go for it now this is a major major setting right here slide dive behavior the default for this, I believe, is tap to slide. When we do tap to slide, we would sprint, tap our circle or side, whatever that is for you, and your guy's gonna slide. We would hold to dive. The problem with this setting is when we tap to slide, there is a delay from when you tap it to when your character slides because the game has to pause for a second and say, okay, is he tapping it? or is he holding it to die? So because of that, if you change this to slide only, you can't dive anymore when you do this. But the moment you press circle or whatever your slide crouch button is, your guy will slide. And it basically gets rid of the annoying delay that is in the game when it comes to slide canceling. So for multiplayer purposes, I would highly recommend you do slide only. Now, when we have the Warzone integration in December, I think it'll be a little bit tricky because we will be giving up diving and diving does serve some purposes, especially like on bundle resurgence, diving across those rooftops and things like that. But I would say overall for multiplayer, absolutely. You want to change this to slide only for a much more faster and responsive slide. Plunging underwater. So there's not really a lot of water in MW3, but I just do free, which means when you look down, your guy is going to dive down. Auto deploy parachute. I leave this off. This only matters for like ground war and things like that. But if you splat into the ground a lot, you might want to turn it on to always. Sprinting door bash simply means that if there is a door, if you are, it is closed. If you sprint through it, it'll slam open. If you have it off, you have to actually 
actually go up and hit square or whichever button it is to open and interact with the door. But leaving it on is what I recommend. Slide cancel sprint. This should default on, but make sure it is on, especially if you're playing tactical button layout, because what it allows you to do is if I hit circle to slide, if I sprint by pressing L3, it'll cancel my slide. So it's just another way to cancel your slide. And I'm very glad they added this setting because it just makes it a little bit more accessible for people without custom controllers to be able to slide. Going on to combat behaviors, aim down sight behavior. You want to leave this as hold. Do not do toggle. This is just hold. Trust me, you kind of want to do that. That is the default setting. Equipment behavior. This is completely personal preference, hold or toggle. So this is like with a grenade. With hold, you would hold it and then you let go to throw. Toggle would be you hit it once, your guy's gonna hold it, you hit it again, he throws. Completely personal preference, but I like to do hold personally. Weapon mount activation is how you get into a mount. Do not do ADS. If you do ADS, you're gonna accidentally mount on things all the time, but it's your preference between double tap ADS or ADS melee. I like ADS melee, so if I go up to a service, I ADS and I hit mount, which for me is R3, I can get into it very easily. Now, if you're playing tactical, your melee will become circle. So for you, you would have to take your thumb off the analog stick for a second to go and hit circle. So in that case, if you don't have paddles like me, you might wanna switch over and do double tap ADS. Weapon mount exit delay, there is a new setting. This used to be short. They now added the instant setting. And all this means is if I am mounted and if I wanna get off the mount, the instant I put any pressure on my left stick to push off, I'm going to unmount. Um, you also can just un ADS and you will unmount that way as well. But I like doing instant because it allows you to get off of it quicker instead of being stuck to the wall when you don't want to be. Now, tack stance activation. This is how we get into our tactical stance. I like to do ADS plus down. These other ones you can absolutely try. If you really like to go in between ADS and in tack stance, double tap ADS is probably going to be your easiest. ADS melee would also be really easy to do if you use R3 as your melee like I do. This is going to be completely perfect. Personal preference for me personally i don't need to go very quickly between them so i just leave it as ads down tax dance behavior if you do on toggle once you put it on your guy is going to stay as tax dance even after you die on respawn it'll reset when you die if i did it to once if i go to tax dance when i un ads i go to normal so i have to hit it each time to go into it. So I'm doing toggle because normally I am building guns to use that way. Now, interact reload behavior. If you only play multiplayer, I would probably say tap to reload or prioritize reload is probably your best bet. But if you play zombies or war zone, highly, highly recommend doing prioritize interact and just sticking like this through multiplayer. So it's good for muscle memory. What prioritize interact does is you have to hold square to reload. So I'm hitting my paddle, but hold square and you're going to reload now there's no doors on this map and there's nothing i can really interact with but if there was a door here because it's prioritize interact i would just have to tap and it's always going to prioritize interacting with the environment like doors looting and things like that it makes looting way faster in zombies and in warzone and then you just have to make sure you're holding to reload armor plate behavior again this doesn't matter in mw3 it does in zombies and in warzone apply all is going to be the fastest for putting on plates so i recommend doing that ads stick swap this is more of like an accessibility type thing there is really no competitive purpose to using this so recommend leaving that off backpack control again this is only going to be zombies and then in warzone you can either use the directional buttons like the d-pad or you can use your stick. I like to use the directional buttons, but again, that is personal preference. Depleted ammo weapon switch. I do recommend turning this one off for most people. The reason for that is, is when you run out of ammo, it'll, if you have it as on, your guy's going to automatically switch weapons if you're completely out of ammo. I don't like doing that because often I realize I'm out of ammo. I hit weapon switch, but if it already started, it then switches back. So I like to avoid that, but if you like it on, you can absolutely leave that on. It's really just personal preference. If you use C4, the difference from grouped to one by one, if you throw two C4 out there and then you double tap your interact button, which for me is gonna be square, it would be, I don't know what that is on Xbox, I can't think. If you have both those C4s out, grouped will blow both of them up. But if you have one by one, it'll blow the first one up and then you have to do it again to blow the second one up. Now, manual fire behavior. This is an interesting setting. This was in previous Call of Duties, but there's something that changed about it here. So manual fire behavior with press, this just means it's a semi-auto gun. So let's say, I mean, I'm gonna toggle over to uh, semi-auto. I have to 
press R2 as fast as I can, okay? That's me going as fast as I can. If I was using like a actual semi-auto gun, you can do hold and you can hold R2 and your guy will shoot. Now, this sucks with pistols. It is, it, they shoot way slower than what you could sh shoot if you just shot it pressing it as quick as you could. But some of the burst assault rifles, there's the FR556 and there's like another DG58, I think it is. Those ones shoot pretty much just as fast and they're kind of broken to use on hold. So if you're using those burst ARs and you're having trouble with them, try to switch this to hold and you will love how good they are. A few more settings to go through here. Vehicle behaviors. I leave most of this on default camera position to free look so I can easily look around. I have to press melee if you're in the vehicle to lean out and look out the window. And then just finally here are some of the overlay behaviors. I have blessed all of this to default as well. Now, before we get into the tip section of the video, I also want to discuss how to overclock your controller. What overclocking your controller does is it essentially reduces the latency and it makes that connection as fast as possible from your controller to your computer. Unfortunately, you cannot do this on console and this only works with PlayStation controllers. So PS4 or PS5, it does work with aim controllers. There are some other companies out there that I know won't work if they're not officially licensed. So the program that we're using for this is called HID USBF. I will leave a link to this in the description. You're gonna download it, extract the files, and you're just gonna run the program. It's relatively self-explanatory. Now from here though, we have to first find your controller. At default, it's probably gonna come up on just mice, change it to all. And what you're gonna wanna look for is the one that it is most likely it's going to say USB audio device here. So let's see if we can find it. So actually mine is gonna say audio endpoint, headset, microphone, wireless controller. So it's kind of confusing why it says that. The reason it says audio is because your controllers have the ability to act like a microphone, correct? So this is the one that we're gonna wanna do here. So you're gonna click on it. While it is clicked on and it is blue, you're gonna hit install service. We're then gonna go over and where it says default, you're gonna go to whatever the highest value available is. PS4 is gonna be a thousand. PS5 is probably gonna be 8,000. Again, unfortunately, this does not work for Xbox controllers. So we're gonna click 8,000. We're gonna hit install again. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna click filter on device. We're gonna click install service again. Once we've done that, unplug your controller. Your controller does have to be plugged in for this to work. Plug it back in. And when it pops up here this time, now it is going to say, yes, 8,001. As long as all of this looks like that, or if you were a PS4, it would say 1,000, you know you did it correctly. Now, just to note, if you change where your controller is plugged into the USB port, if you switch USB ports, you'll have to redo this. So when you open your computer, you can just double check in every once in a while that it is still on this. And that is how you know it is down to a one millisecond delay. That is what that one stands for. So you probably have heard me talk a lot about my aim controller in this video. So if you are interested in getting one, I do wanna share my build and how I set my controller up. Now, the number one thing I will say, yes, I am partner with them, so yes, I probably am biased towards them, but I have used like five or six different custom controllers and by far aim has been my favorite. A few reasons for that. I feel like the paddles are by far the most responsive and comfortable to use out of different brands. Aim also has a lifetime warranty on any of the modded parts. So if you get the custom analog sticks, if one of them breaks, they'll fix it. If your paddles break, they fix it. If your digital tap trigger breaks, they fix it. I get asked this a lot. Do they cover stick drift? There is a stick drift warranty. I think it's up to like nine, it's either six or 90 days here. But what I can say is I've had this controller for about six months or more. I play like five hours a day on it. You guys have seen I have very little stick drift even on zero dead zone. My controller I had before I got my custom TCAP design one, I had for like a year and I had no stick drift on 0.03 dead zone. So I feel like in terms of quality, aim is just above the rest. They actually use officially licensed Sony controllers, unlike a lot of other companies out there. So that is just why I absolutely love them. Now you will probably see on this, it says code snap $55 off code TCAPTNX will get you the exact same thing and it supports me. So if you are inter interested in doing this, I would greatly appreciate if you use my code because it does help support me and let's walk through. So I have a custom PS5. Of course, you can do this similarly on PS4 or Xbox. It's just gonna be a little bit different. So any PS5 custom controller you get is going to come with these features off the start. It's gonna have the four reprogrammable paddles. It's gonna have the active triggers, which means 
is for L2, R2. It's gonna have the digital tap or you can toggle them on and off to a normal one. And one of the new things it has is snap panels. So let me show you what snap panels do. They're really cool. So all of these design panels, I can literally just pop off their magnetic and I can swap different designs on. So I could do this with the other two if I wanted, but I think you get the idea. Basically, they're gonna come with these. So if you wanna buy additional designs and change up what your controller looks like, you can do that very easily and much cheaper instead of buying a whole new controller. So when it comes to design, this is obviously personal preference. In the partner section, we do have the TCAP the next design if you wanna do that and get that, but lots of colors to choose from. Again, this is all just trim. This is purely aesthetic stuff, but I wanna show you the important stuff what of like what changes the performance of the controller digital buttons this is actually making the buttons on the front here go from the normal ones to a digital tap or mouse click like if you're gonna use the paddles i'll be completely honest i think this is unnecessary but if you play claw if you like playing claw i would see the benefit in doing this i do have these on my controller and they are really nice but i'll be honest i don't think it's necessarily worth it unless you've got the money to spend now when it comes to the aim sticks this is very important you're gonna want to pick whatever color Color you want you just want to change it from the dual sense the reason that is is once we pick a color now we can customize our heights and if you're like you know what tcap i don't know if i really want to try a, a high stick i think that might be awkward if you just get like a small left and then you get a uh, high right they're gonna send you multiple sizes so you can swap them out and these are incredibly easy to swap i'll show you guys how to do this you literally just pull up if i don't break it there we go <laughs> you literally just pull up and they pop off and then you just put them back in they don't twist they just pull straight up really easy to change out again the touchpad here is kind of more aesthetic this is just the color of the paddles again just an aesthetic thing here now for the grip i do recommend getting the back grip because it just makes it rubbery and it is a little bit easier to hold on to especially if your hands are getting sweaty like that you can add like a custom gamer tag a logo things like that on here if you want to do that now the smart bumpers so the l1 r1 is not included in this so if you wanted that you could i don't think it's absolutely necessary if you're trying to save the money but i do have them on mine they are nice for that i do have the vibration motors removed on mine that way it is a little bit lighter but again you don't have to do that so if you end up just getting kind of the basics if you get a design and then you add the grip and keep everything else the same it comes out to 246 but like i said when you add it to the cart code tcaptain x is going to drop 50 five dollars off of it so where it says i have a coupon code you can type in tcaptain x and that is gonna drop that money off there and it does support me like i said so if you want to do that i would appreciate it all right so let's now finally get into the kind of tip section of the video where i'm going to explain some different movement techniques and a few very easy tips you guys can apply to really start getting better at the game right away so number one i want to start with centering centering is a very basic concept it's the first thing that i see new to kind of below average players struggling with so centering means our center dot here in the center of our screen we want to make sure when we are running around we are keeping this roughly at chest level of where enemies are going to be we don't want to look down at the ground as we run around i very commonly see this with bad players and then occasionally they might be looking up like this but we want to make sure that center dot is at chest level of where enemies are likely to come from and then to take it a step further here let's say i'm pushing up to this building here and i think players are maybe coming through here I want to make sure my crosshair is centered as close to the edge of this wall as I come through here. I don't want to come in here looking off here and then turning and turning late as I come in here. As I come in, I want to make sure I come in with that crosshair right down in the center of where enemies are going to be. And as I kind of clear areas, let's say I'm, I go through here. Okay, nobody's to my left. Now I need to bring my crosshair over to the right and be ready where an enemy might be. And you're gonna see as I come around corners and stuff, how I am turning my crosshair as I come around the corner, instead of you know, going around, then turning. We wanna make sure that we turn as we come around the corners in case an enemy is there. That way we are much faster to be able to start shooting them. And with that, we'll go into how to slide cancel because centering is very important when it comes to slide canceling as well. So number one, slide canceling, they actually made even easier in this game. In the old Call of Duties or in Warzone 1, it would be sprint, slide, slide, jump. Now it is just sprint, slide, jump, sprint, slide, jump. 
Now you don't see me pressing any buttons here because again, I'm using the paddles on the back of my controller to do so. If you're gonna be playing tactical, it'd probably be sprint R3, L3 in order to do it. But again, I am using my paddles to do so. So why do we side cancel? Now what's different about MW3 is side canceling does not reset our tactical sprint. Tactical sprint is when your guy's gun goes up. It is the fastest possible speed he can do. This is regular sprint, tactical sprint, regular sprint, tactical sprint in old war zone we used to slide cancel because when we slide canceled it would reset and allow us to get back into that tactical sprint does not do that in this one actually has the opposite effect actually slows down the ability to get into it although they have acknowledged that is a bug and they're going to make it so basically so slide canceling has no effect on your sprinting whatsoever so what i'm trying to say is don't go running around and just slide canceling aimlessly in the open like this it it, it serves no purpose you don't need to spam it if you're trying to get from point a to point b you literally just want to sprint. And if you're using automatic tactical sprint, like I recommended for kind of better movement, your guy will automatically start tactical sprinting as soon as that timer recharges. He's just gonna go in and out of it um, and whatnot. So it makes it much easier for just running around. But let's say we have a enemy down this lane here. Maybe I think a guy is right here, or maybe I, I have no idea. And I instead of just coming around the corner and turning, aiming, I wanna be able to very, quickly and aggressively do that so I can side cancel around that corner. The reason this is beneficial is this, I'm very easy to shoot if I just run around and peek. If I side cancel around the corner, I'm a faster moving target and my guy is changing height. So he goes from down and then he pops up and I'm going much faster this way. So basically I become a harder to hit target when I do that. And I'm going to appear around that corner faster for the enemy. But what's so incredibly important of when we do this is that our centering is good. If I slide cancel and I, my aim looks like this when I come around or I side cancel and then I turn, it completely defeats the purpose. What I have to be able to do is as I come around this corner, as I come around the threshold of being exposed here, it is very important that my aim is already centered as I come around here during the slide cancel. So as you start sliding, you have to start turning as well. Now, here's how to take it even farther, and this is new to slide canceling. When we slide and aim, your character will go in the tack stance animation, which is the sideways aiming. Now, what's unique about this is we can start to aim the gun while we slide. You couldn't do this before. So, a little bit more advanced technique for slide canceling is instead of just doing slide, jump, aim, slide, jump, aim, we actually want to do slide, aim, jump slide aim jump because when we cancel that slide we will already be aiming our gun in so slide aim jump slide aim jump essentially it's not as big of a deal with an smg but with a little bit slower gun we are already going to come around that corner aiming our gun and it just simply allows us to get first shots instead of having to bam bam now aim instead we i'm already aiming as i come around that corner so again, slide, aim, jump. Of course, you can also use the tactical pads. The tactical pads are a perk that allows you to actually aim your gun instead of tack stance aim when you slide. If you struggle at executing slide cancels officially, I think that is a good perk. But ultimately, I think if you're a highly skilled player and you are consistent at side cancels and having good centering, I think the method that I'm showing here is perfectly fine and you can use another perk in that place. Now, instead of sliding around the corner, we also could simply jump around the corner and the same thing applies here. It's very important that as I'm jumping, my centering is good. I'm aiming where I think an enemy is going to be. And it's also even more important that I start to aim the gun as I'm jumping. The reason for that is when I just stand and aim versus when I jump and aim, there is an ADS penalty when you jump, meaning you're gonna aim your gun slower when you jump. So it's important that at the moment I start to jump, I start to aim my gun. That way, when I come around this threshold of being exposed, that I am already aiming the gun to get first shots on. If you're gonna ask me, TCAP, which is better? Should I slide cancel around the corner or should I jump around the corner? I think slide canceling is the better option to do because it is faster and because we can aim the gun quicker as well. Now, that is not the only time that we would wanna jump 
or slide though. So let's say I'm in the open and I'm running maybe over this direction here, but all of a sudden while I'm in the mid open, I have no cover. A player is going to come out. I have the option of, I could just try to stand and shoot and hopefully win the gunfight. But if I'm caught off guard, it might be better for me to try to utilize some movement to throw off his shots before I shoot back. So if I'm running this way, I could slide cancel to the side really quickly. And all of a sudden now my character just moved a lot and he has to adjust his aim. So again, I could slide cancel to the side, uh, slide cancel to the side and try to do that to throw off his shots. Basically the whole idea of movement is you want to be a difficult to hit target. So instead of just running in a straight line and shooting back at him and losing a fight that I'm probably going to lose because he's already aiming at me, I could go to the side and slide cancel. The key to this is you don't wanna just slide cancel straight at him. This, that's not doing anything really because you're gonna be easy to hit. You wanna turn 90 degrees to the side either direction, then slide cancel to the side. You also could do that and jump to the side. But again, I think slide canceling is faster and more effective. Now let's talk about drop shotting. Drop shotting has been in Call of Duty for a long time. It's a very simple technique where if somebody comes up on you, you drop down into a prone and shoot at them. Why do we drop shot though? And when is it actually effective? If I come around a corner and this guy is already looking at me, staring at me, it's not gonna be that effective. But let's say I'm in here, maybe I am uh, reloading my gun all of a sudden and a, and a guy comes around the corner. I have the option of just trying to shoot back or if he's very close to me, like from here to here, it's a great time to drop shot. The reason for that is if, I'm aiming at someone and they drop down, I have to adjust my aim a lot and that drop can make them miss shots. However, let's say there's somebody way out here. If I drop shot from here or if they were to drop shot, it's a very small amount of aim adjustment for me to go from where their chest is down to where their head and chest would be now. So you don't want to drop shot at range. You only want to drop shot when somebody is very close to you. Let's say within about five meters or so maybe 10 meters being the absolute maximum, I would say. Beyond that, drop shotting is not very good because most likely when you drop shot, your head is in front of you and they're just gonna shoot headshots on you. So drop shotting is best as you come through doorways, you can do it as well, or in a reactive manner because somebody came around a corner all of a sudden, you didn't hear them and they're very close right up on you is a good time to drop shot. Now adding on to drop shotting, we can do what's called snaking. So let's say there are a few people over here and maybe I'm, in the middle of a reload here where I'm trying to, I still wanna see if they are coming my way. I don't wanna just lay here and wait. I wanna try to get information. So this is what's called snaking, where I am gonna very quickly be proning and peeking up over this cover. Now to do this, it, it essentially is drop shotting and canceling it with a sprint. So you're gonna pull back on the left analog stick as I hold crouch or prone. So that's the drop shot part. And then I'm gonna cancel it by sprinting forward and pressing forward and L3. So drop shot backwards, sprint forward, drop shot backwards, sprint forward. And then you basically just are gonna make this very fast. You're gonna do that same thing, repeat it and go very fast. This does take some practice, of course. This is gonna depend uh, on what type of button layout and what type of control you have on how easy it is gonna do it. I think with paddles, it's relatively easy to do but very good method. That way you can peek above a uh, cover and see them coming. And if you're fast enough about this, you can do this very quickly off cover to where you are to, in their point of view, they like can't even see you. It's kind of broken once you learn how to abuse this, especially if you're on a good piece of cover that is right at about head height. Now, an easier version of that is called shouldering. So instead of having to drop shot and do this and snake, let's say somebody's coming and I'm trying to reload, I could, just shoulder my, my sh I can peek my shoulder out as I'm reloading and I can get information and see, are they peeking? Instead of me just standing here where they can shoot me, if I'm just very quick and just shoulder and peek, I can see, are they coming this way? And you can do the same thing when you're shooting. You can shoot, get behind cover, shoot, get behind cover. So very similar idea of just using cover and trying to be the least amount of exposed as possible. Now, my final tip here, and we did talk about this briefly, is when you're aiming, especially in kind of close to mid range situations, so maybe from about here to 30 meters or so, you wanna make sure that we are strafing left and right while shooting. The reason for this is when you are strafing left and right, whether you're going back and forth or just staying one direction, 
you become a moving target. It is harder for your enemy to shoot you because you're not just standing still, but also if you're on a controller, which I'm assuming most of you guys are that are watching this video, you get more aim assist. So it's very important. We're maximizing that rotational aim assist and we wanna make sure we are always strafing, at least walking forward, but ideally moving left and right so that we are a harder to hit target. So now let's finally get into my favorite method uh, to really improve at the game very quickly. And this is gonna be, so we're gonna start through a private match here. So in the menu here, you're gonna have to, we're at the Call of Duty HQ, go down to the MW3 section and then go over to private match, hit create private match and then it's going to take a second for this to load here until you can edit any settings once that does go to game setup first change your mode to free for all i think is usually best here change the map to a smaller map if you're wanting to work on smgs you can do a mid-range map for ars lmgs and then a big map like a state derail or wasteland would be good for sniping to work on so i'm going to work on smgs here and we're going to go to rust because that's generally the smallest map that we have available currently in game rules here i'm going to show you what you want to change adjust your time limit and score to however you you see fit i normally just crank it up really high and then you can change that how you want to do it. match start time you can go down to five seconds so now we go over to the player tab health turn this up to 300 ideally because this makes you have to track and be more accurate longer over time if you want to just leave it on the default 150 that's fine but i think you're going to get more out of it if you turn it up for health regen i like to turn this to fast go over to the team tab here the only one you want to adjust here is if you want to you can make radar always on but that is personal preference if you want to turn that on or off spawn ammo mags make sure that is on max i like to turn hell steel on this is again personal preference on this one what this does is when you're shooting people you actually gain health back you like siphon health and i just like to do that because i can stay alive and shoot bots more basically that way i also like to go down to the kill streaks and turn them off so i don't have to mess with it now back here at the kind of private match screen here hit up on the d-pad and go to this plus button up here it's uh kind of right above my webcam here and we're gonna add bots here so on rust you can usually add about 10 or so when you add more than that it gets a little hectic so i'm gonna do 10. difficulty honestly i like to just leave it on recruit because i'm just worried about my aiming because all that does when you add difficulties is they just are more accurate so i just leave it on recruit personally but you can change that if you want to hit confirm it's going to add all of these bots here and then we're going to go ahead and start the match now make sure you have your classes set before you do this i've got a overkill class so i've got a the overkill vest or you can use the gunner vest either or um, i've got an assault rifle and i have an smg you can run double smgs double ars or whatever you really want to run i've got my perks right here but i would definitely recommend mag holster because you can reload faster i do like commando gloves also because you can run and reload but everything else is completely up to your own personal preference. So now that we're in the match, the first thing we're going to do here is a little bit counterintuitive. We're going to go into our settings, going to go to controller, go down to aiming. It's going to be on the bottom. Turn your aim assist off. This is what I do. Usually I try to do this every day before I get on where I will go around and I will kill about at least 50 bots or so with aim assist off. The reason for this is once you get really good at playing with aim assist off, when you turn it back on, your aim is going to be insanely good and you are going to start to understand and get a better feel for how aim assist actually works. So again, I'm just gonna run around, kill as many bots as I can here. Uh, you also, if you wanna work on a little bit more mid to longer range, you could go up on top on like the second level here and shoot people, or you can just run around more in close quarters and just go to town. Now, while you're doing this, make sure we're practicing things like side canceling around corners, working on good centering here. You can practice snaking in a situation like this here. Just try to execute as many of those different movement techniques that we talked about previously. And uh, it's just a great training ground to do this here again. Once we have done at least 50 bots, um, that's kind of my bare minimum. Sometimes I do 100. Sometimes I'll, if I'm changing a setting, I might do even more than that. Then go back into your settings, turn your aim assist back on. And once it is back on, it is like a night and day difference of how good your aim is going to feel. And again, make sure we are strafing left and right here so that we are maximizing that rotational aim assist. And you're going to get a better feel for it since it's now been off for a little bit. So that is kind of my tried and true method. Try to do this for 
10 minutes before you jump on every day and you will notice a massive difference in your aim and in your tracking. And especially now in MW3, now that we have a little bit more of a movement skill gap, great way to go in here and practice our movement as well. Now to take this a step further, you also could do the same method and you could 1v1 your friends or get a, a free for all of several of your friends. It's gonna be even better that way because it's also, it's gonna be much more difficult and those players are gonna also be utilizing movement against you. So you can do that. You can still do it where you all turn aim assist off and then you all turn it on at the end uh, again to continue working on that. If you are want to focus on sniping, like I said, do the same thing, but go to a bigger map and find an area to just post up. Or you could honestly go on top of Rust here and you could snipe from up there as well if you wanted to. Now, when Warzone releases in early December, the when the integration happens, I do have plans to do some more videos where I go even more in depth and do like some more uh, drills, like more specific situations to how to improve your aim. But this method right here is what I normally do like 90% of the time and it works so 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 well so i promise you if you stick with this on a daily basis for a few days to a few weeks you will see a big difference very quickly all right guys so that is going to wrap up today's video i hope you found it helpful if you did consider leaving a like and subscribing for a lot more content like this and again if you do decide to get one of those aim controllers please consider using code tcaptainx as it does support me i promise you you'll be very happy if you choose to do so thanks so much guys have a great rest of your day see you in the next one